Hello everyone, Matt here with virtualinstructor.com. One of the most common questions I get asked by students deals with background color choices. Now normally we'll resolve what color we're going to use for a background if the subject is isolated on the background before we even start drawing or painting in the form of thumbnail sketching. But sometimes we get in the middle of a painting or drawing and we start to second guess our original intention or perhaps we want to experiment with different colors in our background and even different values as well. Wouldn't it be nice if we could do this experimentation without worrying about ruining our artwork? Well, we can with Photoshop or some other photo manipulation program. Just recently, we finished a live lesson series where we painted a kingfisher bird with acrylic paint. During the process, I started to second guess my original intention of creating a neutral background, so I decided to do a bit of experimentation with some different background color choices using Photoshop. And in this video, I'll show you how it's done. This is an invaluable tool to use if you're an artist, and it can help you make great decisions about your artwork. Let's have a look. All right, the first step is to bring in our painting or drawing into Photoshop or some other photo manipulation program. And you can see here we're not completely to the background yet in this particular process. We still need to address um, some of the details on the tree or the stump that the bird is sitting on. But we've got most of the colors and values of the bird in place, so it's now time to start thinking about the background. Now, in most circumstances, you want to think about the background right from the beginning. So you want to create thumbnail sketches before you begin to determine Determine what your background color is going to be but a lot of times even when we create thumbnails and we're going through the process of creating a piece of artwork we change our minds and we want to experiment and try some different things and you know when we're working with traditional art materials like paint or colored pencils or pastels or whatever medium you're using you kind of have to think about what you're going to do before you add the colors um, because you of course you don't want to add colors and then decide later that that was not a good color choice well with technology with Photoshop and other photo manipulation programs, we can experiment a little bit before we actually start applying paint to the surface so we get a good idea of what the colors are going to do, how they're going to react um, when we add that background color. Now, of course, I mentioned that color is important, but the value is also important. We want to make sure that the color we choose in the background and the value that we choose in the background really accentuates the subject and makes the subject stand out. Right now, we just have the neutral ground that we put in place when we started this painting and and of course, that's not going to be a good choice for our background. It could work. Um, we can see the birds standing out and contrasting, but we can add a little bit more interest to the background. So the first thing we need to do to experiment with different backgrounds is we need to isolate the subject from the background so that we can start adding backgrounds and experimenting around. So there are a couple of options here in Photoshop. The first option, of course, is to try to use the magic wand tool. So over in your toolbar, you'll see a little magic wand and you can click on that and we'll just try to to pick anywhere in the background here and click on it you can see that when we do click on the background the selection is not very good it's not even really picking up the bird it is to a certain extent but of course there's some issues we can play around with the tolerance up here we can change the tolerance to something like 20 and try to do that and that doesn't really change things too much we'll go the opposite direction we'll go up to 40 and that does a little bit of a better job let's go to 50 and see what happens and getting a little bit closer but you can see it's it's not perfect so our next tool to go to is the quick selection tool and the, the quick selection tool will allow us to basically scroll over the surface with the, the mouse depressed and um, try to pick the areas that we want to select now it it's based on brush size so right now we've got the brush size set on 26 let's make it a little bit larger and we'll just start selecting here in the background um, actually we need to first deselect so we'll go up to select deselect and now we can start to try to pull a selection around you can see so far it's doing a good job picking up the bird but then when we got up there to the beak things got a little crazy we'll continue working our way around and you can see the quick selection tool in this particular case is not necessarily going to be the best option here so let's just back up but you'll see also in the quick selection tool that we have the option up here at the top to select subject. So let's try that. 
and see if the program can pick out the subject. And look at that. It did. It did a great job picking out the subject. It isolated the bird, but it didn't pick up the tree. So very easily, we can just go down here and sticking with the quick selection tool, we can just add this to our selection. So I'm just clicking and dragging over the top. And you can see now the bird is completely isolated along with the tree. And that's that's pretty great. It, there's, it's not perfect. You can see right along the edge here, we could probably extend that out a little bit. Um, and if we need to take anything away, we can just click on the minus selection tool and that will remove bits of the bird there. But this isn't bad. We don't need a perfect cut here in order to evaluate the background. So what we need to do now is take the bird in the tree and put it on its own layer. So I'm just going to hit Command C since I'm on a Mac, um, and that will copy that selection. And then we'll go down here and create a new layer, and we'll hit Command V, which will paste it in place. Now, it doesn't look like anything happened, but if we look over here in our layer palette, we can see that the bird is isolated on its own layer, so we can hide, hide the background layer now, and now we have the bird isolated on its own layer. And we can really see the edges here and how imperfect they are, but that's okay. That doesn't matter. We're just going to be experimenting with colors. So let's create a new background and or a new layer, and this is going to be our background layer. So just to keep things proper, we'll double click on it and we'll go background number one now of course we can just put in a color we can just fill in a color so we'll we'll just start by doing that and have a look at what it looks like and we'll just grab a random color over here we'll try a green and then we'll use the paint bucket and just fill in the background and you can see here now we've got some major contrasted colors and clearly this green background is probably not going to be a really good choice for a background color because our blue and orange relationship is kind of getting overpowered by the bright green in the background we could we could try a a little bit of a darker green there as my bird tries to fly away. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the darker back background I think works a little bit more, but it's still not really working for our subject. Let's try a neutral background. So let's go over to uh, white and just fill in the white. And you can see the contrast is way too strong there. So we'll scroll down and we'll pick up maybe a little bit of a lighter gray. And that's getting a little bit closer. But one of the things that's happening here is we've got this discrepancy between the brush strokes and the stark background. So it's not really giving us a really good idea of what our finished painting could possibly look like. Because we're going to have some variation in value and color in the background anyway when we start applying it. Now, my instinct here looking at this piece is to choose a background color that complements the complementary color scheme. So a background color that's going to work with the complementary color scheme. And that means that we could either go the neutral direction, like we were looking at just a moment ago, or we could choose one of the colors in the bird, on the bird, uh, for our background color, like one of the oranges or one of the blues. Now, we're going to have to adjust the value of those blues in order to do so. Let's So let's go ahead and try one of the oranges, and I can just use my color picker tool over here. We'll just use the eyedropper, and then I can pick a blue or an orange on here. Let's start with an orange. So let's start with one of these lighter oranges there, and you can see it automatically picks it in my color palette over here. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. And let's go ahead and fill that in. Ooh, that's that's pretty strong there. Um, it really is contrasting the blues, but it's still a little bit too strong. But let's go ahead and just start with this base layer and start making some brush strokes over the top of it. Uh, maybe some lighter brush strokes so we get a better idea of how this is going to look. So I'm going to create a new layer over the top of that background color. And I'm going to call this brush strokes. Now I'm gonna pick a good brush for this and Photoshop now comes with Kyle's brushes. Um, I've had these for years and used these for years, but if you're brand new to Photoshop or you have a, an Adobe um, CC subscription, then you have access to all of uh, Kyle's brushes, which are used by professionals all over the world. They're fantastic brushes. They do a great job of replicating um, actual traditional painting and drawing tools. So this brush, let's see, what's the name of this brush here? Um, I think this is the big wide softy brush here. Yep, that's what it is. And I'm just going to pick a slightly lighter version of the color that we placed in the background. And let's start making some brush strokes over the top. So I just want some of that darker orange to show through. This is a little bit of a lighter orange. 
and it's going to give us a little bit more of an accurate feeling of what our painting might look like if we have some looser brush strokes over the top. Now you might be wondering why am I not going to just consider putting tree branches and things like that in the background. Well this is a relatively small painting. It's only eight inches wide by 10 inches tall and I don't want to muddy it up with a lot of details. I want the bird to to remain the focus of the painting. So that's why we're going to stick with pretty much neutral colored background here. So we can add some variation in here. We can add a little bit of a slightly darker bit here and there if we want to isolate certain areas and bring out the contrast. So if we have a lighter area in the middle portion of the bird, we can maybe make the oranges a little bit darker across. And vice versa, if we have a darker area, or if we have a darker area on the bird, we can make an area a little bit lighter if we want to. So we'll go up here and make it a little bit lighter around the beak and see how that stands out. So that's not too bad. I kind of like the way this looks. But, you know, a warmer background tends to come forward. And since we have that orange background, that's going to tend to make the, the bird recede a little bit because the bird is blue. So it might be a better option to pick a bluer background maybe, but uh, let's go ahead and create new layers to do so. So we have our orange layers to make comparison. So we'll create a new layer and we'll call this one background two. And we'll go ahead and go ahead and add a little bit of color there. So let's pick another color from the body of the bird and we'll pick uh, a bluer color and when I click on the color picker and then scroll over the image, you can see our eyedropper tool pops up um, and it brings up the color picker for us. We'll start with, uh, let's go with a more neutral, darker blue here. It's And go ahead and fill in that background color. Now you can see when we add the blue, the bird is almost entirely lost here so because the blue is so similar but let's go ahead and add some brush strokes over the top and see if uh, we can pull the bird back out a little bit with some contrast and we'll call this layer brush strokes two and then we'll go back to our our brush tool and uh, we'll start making a little bit of some lighter maybe more not neutral marks over the top here, just like we did with the oranges, so we can get an idea of what this is going to look like. Now let's make it a little bit lighter, have some variation here. And of course there are a ton of different brushes to choose from. This one is larger and just gives me an impression of the brush stroke, so I don't have to spend a whole lot of time experimenting with the different colors. I can, let's get that grid line out of the way there. I can experiment with the different colors I want quickly with this larger brush because really this is we're not finished we're not creating a finished work here we're just experimenting with our background colors. Kind of like this. Now there are some more blue greens that are happening in the on the bird too so we can try to pull in some of those blue greens a little bit here and there we'll keep the value the same and just bring down bring down the color a little bit or just change the color a little bit bring it closer to the green side of things and if we want to have kind of a band of color this blue green going through here right around the head area we can do that because this is of course the focal point in this image is going to be pretty much the head of the bird um, and you can see it's positioned in the upper third of the picture plane so if we want to accentuate that we can have a little bit more of a pop of color coming right across the middle or a little bit of a contrasting color we can also make the value contrast if we want to so a little bit lighter up here Um, and let's see, let's maybe, let's make some of these values a little bit darker down here. So we'll grab that blue color that we had and just make this a little bit darker down here at the bottom. And that will help to contrast 
the tree branch down here at the bottom. Maybe a little bit at the top too. And then let's kind of create a little bit more of a transition here. So we're getting a pretty good idea of how our brush strokes are going to look back here. That's my plan for finishing this painting is having a, a little bit more of a brush strokey background. And this isn't bad right here. Let's go ahead and bring a little bit more of the gr blue green into things. Maybe not that much. There we go. We'll just bring that down into some of those darker blues down there at the bottom. Now, I don't think that's bad at all. We can also um, make the, um, the value a little bit darker without doing too much work. We don't have to paint over the top uh, again. All we have to do is go up to Image Adjustments, and then we can go to Brightness Contrast. And since we're on that particular uh, layer, we can just bring the, the brightness down and make the values a little bit darker in the background so we get an idea of how that's going to look. Or we can make it a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter if we want, and see how that contrast is going to work. Uh, I kind of like this color relationship. I think that that uh, background would work. But let's try another one. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And let's go pretty dark and neutral. Well, not completely neutral, but a little bit darker here. Let's Let's make this a little bit more of an earthier greenish color and uh, we'll get an idea of what that looks like. So I'm just using the color picker and I'm staying in the, the greens here, but I'm bringing the, the color picker down so that we have uh, a little bit less saturation and we're making the value a little bit darker. Um, and so that's a good neutral green to start with. And let's go ahead and name this one background three. And we'll just put that color in place. And then we'll create a new layer again and call this one Brush Strokes 3. And uh, we'll make sure that we spell Brush Strokes correctly. <laughs> All right. Now on the Brush Strokes layer, we can start adding some variety here. So we'll make this a little bit more neutral, a little bit darker here initially. and. Uh, a little bit more neutral. Start making some brush strokes over the top of that, and we can go even a little bit darker down here. Just quickly, quickly adding some of this color. Uh, let's make it a little bit lighter up here. And this more neutral looking green is kind of working here. Of course, like I said, we have some blue greens on the body of the bird. We just want to make sure that our background is not so bright and so strong that it detracts from the bird. The bird is the star of the show. This neutral color, this neutral green kind of adds a little bit of a different flavor to the image, of course. Let's make it slightly lighter right across the area of focus. So you can do anything you want with this program, of course. You can experiment with all different types of things. If you want to create more of a uh, geometric pattern in the background or anything like that, you can experiment and see what is gonna work for your drawing or painting before you go to the next step. And this, of course, just takes a couple of minutes to do so. If you've never used Photoshop before or a program like that, or if you only used it a few times, it might, might take you a couple of minutes to get used to it, but I'm telling you, this is a very valuable tool for experimenting with different things that you're going to do in your art without having to make a commitment until you're ready to make that commitment. And let's go ahead and make the bottom portion a little bit darker. I kind of, I really like the way this, uh, this neutral green is working here. Let's make that slightly darker. 
make that tree stump stand out a little bit more. Okay, so we got a pretty good idea of how that's going to look like as a painting. And the best part is we can go back and look at our other versions. So we've got our, our neutral green background. There is our bluish background. And you can see how much brighter that blue is when we bring that darker neutral green back. Um, so let's hide that. And then, of course, we have our oranges our orange background as well. You can see how bright that is too. So maybe we could tone down the orange background, but uh, this is a great way to experiment and uh, try to figure out what you want to do with your background and how it's going to work with your subject without actually making a commitment before you actually do it. So I hope this helped you. Um, I'm sure that if you implement this in your own artistic process, it's going to help you make great decisions uh, before you have to commit to them. And now here's a look at the finished acrylic painting. After we did our experimentation with different colors, we decided to go with the dark green background, and I think it was a great color choice, thanks to Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.